Right, uh, hello again. Mm. Episode nine, uh, where we're going to look at, um, I think, the ignition coils and see if we can fit that in, how they're going to mount. Um, as you can see, I've got the empty engine in the frame now. Um, I've got the tank on because I need to have a look at the sort of space underneath here, see what we can fit here. Um, and I've got this uh, um, tail section on purely because I'm not quite sure where the tank's going to live because this isn't the standard frame for this tank. So it's all a bit unknown as with everything else in this project. Um, so I think the first thing I'll need to do um, is have a look at where these coils are going to go underneath the uh, tank. Make sure there's uh, somewhere for them to live. I think obviously we'll have to get this lot off. Yeah, it all looks a bit grotty, but once it's painted, it'll be all right, I think. So yeah, so this is the area we're working with. Um, it does look like there's quite a lot of space under here between the um, head and the frame, but obviously there is still the cam cover, and then there's a breather over here, so we don't have quite as much room as this, but um, I think we'll fit it all in there. There's some mountings over here uh, for the original coils. Uh, I'm going to try and utilize these, I think. Um, so yeah, so let's get a close up, and then we can see how we're going to go about uh, how about fitting uh, go about fitting this lot in here. Yeah. Right, so this is the area we're looking at. Um, we've got our four coils, and the way I'm thinking of doing this, I think we want them down here with the uh, plugs sticking up. Um, hopefully, there's enough space to get all four in a row. Might have to tilt, tilt one slightly, tilt the outer one slightly, to get access to the plugs. And then, if they sit like that, then the uh, extensions can come off the back from here around to the actual spark plugs. So that's what I'm thinking is probably going to work. Um, there's these two mounting points there. These two are quite far forward. Uh, I think we'll ignore those two. We'll just use these two. Weirdly, they're not aligned to each other. They're slightly off center from each other, which is weird. Um, it looks intentional though. Uh, so we'll have to just work around the fact that they're not aligned to each other and, and create a mounting that's got that offset built in so that the plugs can sit nice and square. I mean, sorry, the coils um, will come in from underneath. Obviously, the original coils were mounted on top here across this way because there was only two. Um, but we'll use the underside, so I'll have to allow for the fact that there's some um, metal in the way. So I'll, I'll work something out, um, but I think that's kind of the idea. And then if I have all four together and sitting under there like that, I think that'll probably work. Shouldn't get in the way of every of anything. As long as it's a narrower than the actual frame, then the tank shouldn't interfere with it. Um, and we might use a little space down here, but there is enough, I think, um, one, even with the rest of the engine together. It just might mean that if you want to remove the cylinder head with the engine in the frame, that you have to take the coils off first, but that's not the end of the world. It's a small price to pay. So I'm going to go and design something and 3D print it, and then we'll come back and see how that works. Right. So here's our 3D printed um, coil mounting bracket. Uh, that's the main body part, and then there's two of these little clampy bits. Um, they're a bit thin, so I tend to do this when I'm designing stuff for 3D printing. I always tend to make things a lot thinner than they need to be. Um, I think that needs a bit of thickening. Um, I've just tapped some threads into the holes directly because it's uh, just a test. So we just want to see if it's all going to fit before we go ahead and commit to actually making it out of aluminium so um yeah let's just see how the coils fit in there i think uh, easiest way is going to be to screw these little clampy parts on and then slide the coils in yeah so that kind of makes sense i suppose let's see if the coils fit in there 
uh, that's up towards the tank so the coils need to go in with the uh, sockets facing up right and then we can just tighten that right we can tighten it part of the way and then position them manually that works fine yeah no this is a bit dodgy using a shifting spanner but I can't be asked to go to the garage and find a a tin socket that's looking pretty good actually yeah these need to be a little thicker these clampy parts definitely need a bit more sta stabilized sort of shape um, but concept looks good actually if that fits under the and um, in the existing mounting point that'll work really well let's go check it out okay back again with our 3d printed uh, mock-up uh, so that goes there Right, so I need to swivel these in a bit, I think, to make a little bit of extra room. Yeah, there's plenty of space here for the uh, plugs to go onto these uh, coils, and I feel like that's not a bad location. Um, got some temporary screws to drop in the engine I mean to uh, to mount this it's just M6 for some reason I seem to have a shortage of M6 at the moment I don't know why I must have used them all up I'll have to go and get some more I think just had a nice uh, 20 minute game of find the 10 millimeter socket. I'm so tired of playing that game. We're not going to do these up too tight because, as I said before, they're only threaded. Uh, I just tapped the, um, the PET G uh, 3D print. They don't have any inserts or anything. But yeah, that's that looks pretty secure. I think we'll have enough space. And. Um, we can easily get to the um, the plugs. I might even shift this whole thing forward a little bit. I think these coils could live, sit a little bit further forward. So if we loosen that, we should be able to slide them a bit. I mean, I have designed this so that I can position them in the most convenient location. But um, yeah, I like that. So we can come from here to there with our uh, extensions once we've made them. But yeah, that's that's pretty good that. Quite happy with the way that looks. Yeah, very happy with that. I think this will work. Right, so now that we know this fits, um, let's go and machine one of these out of aluminium and um, finalize this whole thing. And then we'll do the uh, spark plug um, wire extension cord thingies um, and get the whole thing finalized.
Right, so now that I'm done with the machining, we now have that. I've deburred everything and tapped all the little holes. Um, I will probably powder coat that at some point. I thought I might do it for this video, but I think it's getting long enough to be honest. So uh, I, think, I think let's get the engine running before we start making things look pretty. So. But let's test that. We'll fit it to the, fit this, the coils and, and make sure it works as well as the uh, 3D printed version does. And then we'll get that on the frame and make sure everything fits. Um, and then we can move on, I think, to the next thing. I will put some better screws in. These are just temporary for testing purposes. I'll get some um, stainless button heads, I think, for that. Yeah, you can see that's quite a lot thicker than the original 3D printed design. Oh, tighten that up a bit too much already. Yeah, they all fit. I can still semi-tighten them and uh, get some adjustment on them. repositioning make sure all the plugs are pointing in the right direction yeah and then yeah they seem well secure I'm gonna say that's good As long as that still fits in the frame, I think we're good to go. Let's go see. 
Okay, so that's looking pretty promising. Uh, yeah, the holes do line up. So let's get this on. Just a hair out of position there. I think what I should probably do, just enlarge these holes a tiny bit. These holes, I think I can open them up just a tiny bit, just to give me a little more, bit more space there. Let's go get a drill. No sense getting swarf in there if we don't need to. Uh, we can pretty these up later. Right now we just want to know everything's going to fit. I've only gone half a mil bigger. Yeah, that looks good, that. I'm happy with that. Look pretty solid. I think what I'll do next, I'll get some plugs in and we'll go make up the um, extension cables and see if the whole thing fits together. Right, so we're going to assemble these extension cables for the uh, coils to the spark plugs. Got some high tension wire and a couple of these NGK plug caps. Um, I've also got these little plastic insulator parts that I just machined from some identi unidentified plastic. I suspect it's um, acetal, probably be all right. And then I did these as well. These are just little uh, copper sort of terminal things um, to simulate the end of a uh, spark plug. So that just uh, attaches to your HT cable and then goes inside and should come out the other end. Oh, this probably jamming on the grub screw, which is not actually screwed all the way in. Yeah, I bet that's what's going on here. Try that again. Yeah, they are quite a tight fit in there. I'd prefer them to be a fairly tight fit. Um, but yeah, that just sort of simulates the end of a spark plug. Um, in the end, I chose not to put any grooves or threads on the end because um, I'm just a bit concerned because these are made of copper. They're not the strongest of materials. So I thought just to be on the safe side, um, the last thing I want is one of these snapping off so leave it as strong as possible by uh, not putting any thread on it. But anyway, looks okay, I think. Um, so all I need to do now is cut the cable up. And um, yeah, we should be good to go. I uh, decided the cable, I think, will go with uh, 400 mil. And then I can always cut it shorter later. This should be fairly quick and easy actually. Just need to expose about 10 mil of the copper core, just roughly. Insulation is really thick. And they really don't want to be... <laughs> Not the tidiest job I've ever done. <laughs> I'll just trim that a bit with the old blade. That looks all right. Let's twist that up. So these just attach using a little uh, M3 grub screw. I thought I might need more than one, but we'll see how it goes. It's tricky with M3. Don't want to tighten it so much you strip the little bugger. Right, and then one of these little connector um, insulation things. So that goes on like that. And then I've split the back end there just so I can stick a cable tie around it. Um, for now, I'm just installing these um, clean, but later on what I'll probably do is get some uh, sealant in there of some kind, just to make sure it's, you know, watertight. And then should be good to go, I think. 
Now we've got a simulated uh, spark plug. They are a tight fit into these rubber bits on the end of the coils, so they really could use a bit of lubrication, I think. But once it's in, I don't think the coil knows the difference. So all that needs doing now is uh, the plug cap. And these just screw on the end. And then the little rubber cover can go on. And there we go. One extension coil for a stick, uh, sorry, one extension cable for a stick coil. Hopefully these are long enough. 400 should be plenty from what I could see. And then um, all that remains is to make up the other three. Right, one, two, three, four. Four plug leads, ready to go. Right, got our plugs. Let's get these guys in. These are just some used plugs. I think what I'm going to do going to pull these rubber rubber caps off because these extensions are a bit of a tight fit in those rubber caps and when I actually install everything I intend to use a bit of lubricant on them like a bit of red rubber grease or something but I don't want to put any on now because I still think I might um, oh they are quite tight aren't they uh, do you think I might ah, bugger it I'll just try it So here's our, uh, our extensions. I've cut them all at 450 mil purely because um, I don't know what length they need to be and that gives me some wiggle room. Yeah, they're quite tight, but I think the concept works. I'm not gonna stick them in all the way because as I said, I wanna use it. I'll use a bit of red rubber grease when I install them but I don't want to get grease all over them yet because I might put a sealant in them and I don't want to have to clean all the grease out first. So I'll just stick them in and that's all the way in. I think what I'll do is I'll get some smaller ones for the outer two cylinders and he just use the longer ones for the inner two. But that looks okay that. Pretty happy with that. I'm going to call that sorted. May as well uh, make sure everything's going to fit under the tank. Yeah, everything's clear of everything else. Just some smaller plug caps required there, and then I think we'll be good to go. Yes, yeah, so uh, I'm very happy with that. I think these look okay. I'm going to call the uh, uh, coils set up sorted now uh, we know what we're doing and um, for anyone who might be wondering why I'm going to all the trouble of using these stick coils instead of the standard sort of simpler um, original coils for the GS um, because I'm using the Triumph TT600 ECU it, and it doesn't use uh, any kind of camshaft sensing it only senses off the crankshaft you absolutely have to have separate coil for each cylinder otherwise it's unable to work out which cylinder is doing what in the combustion cycle so um yeah i could use some kind of aftermarket ecu but the point of this is to try and do this inexpensively using used bits um off of uh, a triumph at the end of the day so all of these parts come from a triumph tt600 as well as the ecu which is over here and um, there's no way to make that work without having separate coils. So um, if, if I can't get everything to work, um, I might change to a different ECU and then who knows? But um, that's the way things are for now. 
Uh, but yeah, anyway, hopefully see you in the next episode. Thank you very much for watching.